Welcome everyone to Mind Yourself Explorations, a series of short conversations which are inviting real engagement with the themes and the topics of the Mind Yourself book series. I'm Dr. Mary Murray. I'm series editor of Cork University Press, Mind Yourself uh, book series. And the series is designed to bring researched, peer-reviewed information from frontline professionals um, on important issues of health and well-being. And at one level, information about everything is available everywhere on multiple platforms, but relying on these has become increasingly problematic as we have to deal with the world of misinformation, disinformation, misdirection, at which we end up saying, what's true, what can I believe in, what can I trust, and how can I be safe? So the Mind Yourself series was really created to address that, and it's delivered by the finest of professionals in whom readers can have absolute confidence. So for this fourth segment, we have one of the finest of professionals, Dr. Sean Ruth, organizational psychologist and specialist in the area of leadership development, conflict resolution, and diversity. And we have in earlier discussions, um, as you know, Sean, we've looked at um, discrimination, internalized oppression. We've looked at those patterns of internalized domination. And now, we come to, I suppose, a very important uh, section, which is about awareness and healing. And I, what I'd love to know now is having understood and followed this path that you brought us on of awareness and self-awareness and insight into the issue. I'm just wondering, what are the implications of all this now for how we manage diversity? Well, there are a range of things that we can do both individually and together. And in fact, uh, it makes sense to do both. So a starting point, I think, is to claim the various identities that we have. Some of these are, are more obvious to us, uh, particularly the places where we feel oppressed. But also claiming the oppressor identities that we have. So that's a starting, we're just claiming that I, I belong to such and such a group. That doesn't mean I'm a bad person, it just means I happen to have that identity. And then having claimed the identity, getting together to tell our stories with people who share the same identity. So for example, we get together in a women's group and we tell our stories. And as we do that, we, we notice the pattern, the common pattern. We, we, we hear the same stories being told. We hear people dealing with the same feelings. And we begin to, uh, what, what tends to happen is we, be, we move from seeing this as just me to, oh, you mean I'm not the only one? And we begin to see a pattern to the stories. And as we tell these stories also, we get to heal the various painful feelings that are attached to those stories. So we get to grieve about what happened. We get to rage about what, hap what happened. We get to feel the fear we experienced when various things happened and so on. And we get to listen to one another and as we tell the stories and feel those feelings, and this becomes an important healing process. And as we do that, then there are, it becomes clear that there are particular decisions that it's useful for us to make. So as I, or as we identify that the, the ways that we've internalized the oppression, well, we can begin to decide, for example, to reclaim pride. Uh, we can be, begin to name what's true of us inherently rather than what the oppression told us was true of us. And you see that with, with different liberation groups. You know, black is beautiful, gay pride. This is part of that process of, of liberation. And so we can decide to reclaim pride. We can also decide to contradict 
all of the internalized oppression we, and the internalized domination. So all of those patterns that we've internalized, we can decide to act differently. We can decide to act outside them. We can decide not to act them out. And as part of that, we can decide to reclaim our power. So we can, we can decide to take action in spite of our feelings of powerlessness. We can decide to take leadership. We can decide to try and change what we see happening around us. These are all part of the, the both bringing things to awareness and, and healing them. And there's a particular, um, there's a particular way that that has almost happened spontaneously to some extent with, within oppressed groups, but it's been very rare within oppressor groups because it's hard to face ways that we've perhaps mistreated people or been superior or acted superior to them and so on. But part of the challenge here is can we create safety for people to come together as an oppressor group and to be honest about what they've internalized? Can I get together with people who share my identity and be honest about the prejudices that I've internalized? And we know, for example, that one of the ways to eliminate prejudice is simply to, to name it and to talk about it. Um, so th there's a huge amount of work that we can do in these settings um, that will begin to move through the internalized oppression. Uh, and this, may, this can make a huge difference to us. And I suppose the other thing, and maybe, maybe this is, this is a, a, a good point to kind of end this on. I mean, you talked earlier about managing diversity. Um, traditionally, what we did with diversity was we basically said to people, let's pretend that it doesn't exist. Let's focus on what we have in common and not really talk about our differences. And if nobody talks about the differences, everything will be fine. There will be no conflict. Um, we'll all be uh, cozy and uh, comfortable. But that particular way of thinking about diversity had a huge cost for people. It meant that I could belong to this group as long as I left big chunks of myself, big chunks of my humanity at the front door, um, that I could be belong and be accepted in this group as long as I didn't bring my differences with me. And that, that was very damaging and very hurtful for people. Uh, and that was, that was the pattern for many, many very diverse groups that actually didn't recognize that they were diverse. There was a pretense that we were all the same. So they, there's an, alter, an alternative to that. And that's that we uh, actually uh, celebrate diversity, that we nurture diversity, that we cherish it, that we go after bringing out the diversity that's part of this group and make it safe for people to be different and make it safe for people to be listened to while they talk about how hard it is to be part of this group with their particular identity. Um, and so this moved very... away from the silencing, you know, that silencing, subjugation, the voices, and let's pretend this isn't so, which yeah. is another form, is, as, as I understand you, Sean, such, such another form of oppression. Yeah. Or the token, the token person not in a group or whatever. Yeah. But so it has to be discussed. It has to be named. It has to be articulated and so on. Is that what you're advising? Even more than named and discussed, uh, I think we have to celebrate it. Okay. It's, it's, this is good. Um, these differences enrich us. Uh, yes. One of the things that I, I've realized over the years is how, how um, enriched my life becomes when I realize the, the variety and the diversity of the people that are in my life. Uh, so we, we, we have a completely different attitude towards diversity. We welcome it. Um, but we're also realistic about 
the, the fact that some of these people have been oppressed in one form or another, and there's healing to be done. But that's possible once we, uh, once we name it and celebrate it and create the safety for people to tell their stories. So we're ending on a note of hope. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> hope so. Um, Sean, uh, Sean Booth, thank you just so much for your insights, for your wisdom, for your um, teasing out all of the complexity of, of these issues for us. And to anybody listening, we are just delighted that you've joined Mind Yourself Explorations. The authors in Cork University Press hope that the Mind Yourself series finds its way to all who need it and that it gives readers the tools and the resources to really mind themselves. And if you'd like to learn more about this and explore further the books, please go to the website mindyourselfbooks.ie. That's mindyourselfbooks.ie. Thank you very much. <laughs>